we have some sign-up sheets in the back again. So if you're if you want to be a greeter or, or sign up for something like that, uh, please do. Also, there's a sign-up sheet for this Wednesday Lenten service that they will be here at Trinity, and we'd like to have an idea of how many people will be coming. Are there any other other announcements? If not, please join in the call to worship. I look to the mountains. Where will my help come from? My help will come from the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. The protector of Israel never dozes or sleeps. The sun will not hurt you during the day. Nor the moon during the night.
to us when we come in sorrow for our sins. Please join in the prayer of confession. The Lord said, Earth and sky, listen to what I say. Donkeys know where their master feeds them. Your sins drag you down. You have rejected the Lord. Let us confess our sins in silence. But when the loving kindness and goodness of God appeared in our Savior, he saved us not because of righteous deeds we had done, but because of his mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Amen. reading is from 1 Samuel chapter 16 verses 6 through 13. When they arrived, Samuel saw Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed stands here before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and had him pass in front of Samuel. But Samuel said, The Lord has not chosen this one either. Jesse then had Shammah pass by, but Samuel said, Nor has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse had seven of his sons pass before Samuel, but Samuel said to him, The Lord has not chosen these. So he asked Jesse, Are these all the sons you have? There is still the youngest, Jesse answered. He is tending the sheep. Samuel said, Send for him, we will not sit down until he arrives. So he sent for him and had him brought in. He was glowing with health and had a fine appearance and handsome features. Then the Lord said, Rise and anoint him, this is the one. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David. Samuel then went to Rome. The second reading is from Romans chapter 3, verses 21 to 31. But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been made known, to which the law and the prophets testify. This righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference between Jew and Gentile, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came through Jesus Christ. God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement through the shedding of his blood to be received by faith. He did this to demonstrate his righteousness because in his forbearance he had left the sins committed beforehand unpunished. He did it to demonstrate his righteousness at the present time so as to be just as the one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus. Where then is boasting? It is excluded because of what law? The law that requires works? No, because of the law that requires faith. For we maintain that a person is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. Or is God the God of Jews only? He is not the God of Gentiles too? 
Yes, Gentiles too. Since there is only one God who will justify the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised through that same faith. Do we then nullify the law by this faith? Not at all. Rather, we uphold the law. The Gospel is from Luke chapter 7, verses 36 through 50. When one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him, he went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. A woman in that town who lived a sinful life learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house, so she came here with an alabaster jar of perfume. As she stood behind him at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them, and poured perfume on them. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would know who is touching him and what kind of woman she is, that she is a sinner. Jesus answered him, Simon, I have something to tell you. Tell me, teacher, he said. Two people owed money to a certain money lender. One owed him 500 denarii and the other 50. Neither of them had the money to pay him back, so he forgave the debts of both. Now which of them will love him more? Simon replied, I suppose the one who had the bigger debt forgiven. You have judged correctly, Jesus said. Then he turned toward the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me any water for my feet, but she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman from the time I entered has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. Therefore I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven, as her great love has shown. But whoever has been forgiven little, loves little. Then Jesus said to her, Your sins are forgiven. The other guests began to say among themselves, Who is this who even forgives sins? Jesus said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. This is the good news. Praise you, Our hymn is Elite Theme number 54 in the supplement.
and the outsiders. So there's four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, four books in the Bible that tell Jesus' life, and Luke's Gospel has a particular emphasis on how Jesus lifted up the lowly and reached out to humble people. Now we all judge, and it's a part of life. A teacher judges an assignment. Should it be an A or a B? You know, a jury is not the judge, but still they judge. You know, is this person guilty or innocent? And a policeman will judge whether you're speeding or not. And we would all agree that at some level we're allowed to judge. I'm going to ask you a few questions that are a little tricky and think about it. Okay, do you have the right to judge someone's funny haircut? You know, thinking, oh, I can't believe they got that haircut. Do you have the right to judge that? Now, if you're sitting next to someone who just got their haircut, just look forward, don't look at them. <laughs> but what if it's your kid's haircut and they want to get a bad word shaped into their uh, hair there? Do you have the right to speak to that? It's a, a, all a little tricky, you know, maybe the closer someone is to you, the more you might need to get involved in judging or not. You know, sometimes the closer that you are to someone, like if it's your spouse with the bad haircut, you know, the less you should judge, you know, you should just be praising how good they look in that haircut. So sometimes you need to judge, and sometimes you get into trouble if you judge. And today we're going to talk about a guy who judged Jesus and thought he had him figured out, but he was wrong. So Simon was a Pharisee, and he invites Jesus over for dinner. The Pharisees studied and taught the law of Moses, and they uh, thought of themselves as holy. They taught people how to be holy. And Simon the Pharisee was curious about Jesus. Most of the Pharisees didn't like Jesus because he was thinking people are more important than rules. And that wasn't how they operated. Pharisees stayed away from sinners while Jesus would talk to and help them. So Simon invited Jesus over for dinner. But he didn't do the usual things you might do to welcome a guest. Like, you know, if someone came to your home, you might say, oh, come in, have a seat. Can I take your coat? Would you like a drink? Uh, back then, the kind of thing that you would do was you would usually give your guest a kiss on the cheek. You would bring out a bowl of water and a towel so your guest could wash their feet. If you had a servant, your servant would wash their feet. And you might put some oil on their heads so they look and smell awesome in an olive oil kind of way. Uh, but Simon didn't do those things. He invited Jesus to his home, but it was not a, a very <coughs> warm welcome. So a, a woman who led a sinful life, we don't know what it was, how she sinned. She heard that Jesus would be at Simon's house. And she brought some perfume and she headed over there. And she must have heard about Jesus' kindness and that he welcomed sinners. So Jesus was reclining at table at Simon's house. And that means he was probably uh, lying on his side. You know, he had his elbow propped up on pillows and he, you know, you could eat with one hand and then uh, your feet might be out there you know, on pillows. So it's kind of laying down. And uh, so that's the way he was positioned. And then she walks in and she's behind him. And she didn't mean to cry on his feet, but she started crying. And so all these tears fell on his feet. And she decided she needed to wipe them up. and. Uh, she didn't have a towel, so she let down her hair. And a woman was never supposed to do that in public. She was supposed to have a covering on her hair. So she wipes Jesus' feet with her hair, and then next she 
kisses Jesus' feet. And that seems weird, but it was a common sign of respect and honor to kiss a rabbi's feet. See what we're missing out on. <laughs> and uh, maybe not as she does, you know, she just keeps constantly kissing them. But Simon sees what this woman is doing and says to himself, well, if Jesus was really a prophet, he would know that this woman touching him is a sinner and he would stop her. So he's not a prophet. That's how Simon has judged Jesus. He lets sinners touch him. And Simon also judged the woman that she is a sinner. Have you ever been a Pharisee in your heart where you're judging someone in words that you wouldn't say out loud. I know I have, and it's easy to see someone else's sin, but harder to notice our own sin. So Jesus, you know, Simon just talked to himself, maybe Jesus overheard him, or, or he just looks at Simon, and he sees the look on Simon's face, you know, disgust, like, what is this? And uh, he says, Simon, if two people owed a creditor, and one had a small debt, and the other had a huge debt, and they were both forgiven, you know, the debt was wiped out by the creditor. Which one will love that creditor more? And Simon said, well, the one who had a huge debt forgiven. And Jesus said, that's right. You didn't let me wash my feet when I came in, but she washed my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You didn't kiss my cheek when I came in, but she hasn't stopped kissing my feet. And you didn't put olive oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. She is so grateful. She loves because her many sins are forgiven. And Jesus tells the woman, your sins are forgiven. Go in peace. And Jesus you know, he had said to Simon, look at this woman. Do you see her? And he's saying to him, don't just condemn her, but see her. Really see her. Simon just saw a sinner. But Jesus saw a person in pain. Someone who needed grace and not judgment. A dearly loved child of God. But Jesus doesn't want us to pick apart other people's faults. Uh, we've got issues of our own. But he wants us, uh, sometimes we need to judge. And when we do, we give people some extra grace. You know, like I think of children, we know that they're still learning. So maybe uh, a little child looks up and, and says, uh, oh, you're so old, you know, it's no big deal. Uh, we know they're still learning. And Jesus was the same way with sinners. He gave them some extra grace. When they approached him trying to come closer to God, Jesus knew, well, they're just learning. His goal wasn't to uh, wall himself off from any sinner who might do something wrong or, or to condemn them. Uh, his goal was not to stay pure. But Jesus' goal was to go out to the sinners, to welcome them and rejoice when they turn to God. So imagine if all Christians looked at people like Jesus did. We would give folks extra grace. We would know we are all still learning. And when a sinner would turn to God, we wouldn't expect them to have everything figured out. We would encourage them and love them and rejoice that they have begun to follow Jesus. So this week the homework is to read Romans 3.23 and we'll say it all together now. So repeat after me. For all have sinned, For all For all have sinned, sinned. and fall short, and fall fall short, short. of the glory of God. Of the glory of God. And that verse uh, tells us to be humble because it's not like we're uh, all got our acts together, but uh, we're all sinners and uh, we all 
react with grace to other people. So judging is something we need to do. It's part of life, but sometimes it is tricky. And Jesus taught Simon that he and all of us have sinned, and he also taught sometimes the person you think is the sinner is also the saint, the one who loves much. So judge carefully and see people as Jesus saw them. He saw all of them. He saw their pain and brokenness and heartache. He saw who they were meant to be, and he saw them as dearly loved children of God. Amen. Please stand and join as we recite the Apostles' Creed, our testimony of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He descended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O holy God, we give you thanks. We rejoice to come before you and give you praise in your house. And we thank you that you see all of us. You see beyond our sins and uh, you call us to better things as you also offer your grace. And we're grateful that you always seek us out. You don't leave us where we are. And we ask you to help us to grow in humility, to recognize our sin and be compassionate and gracious to others. We pray for all who are sick. We especially pray for healing for Shelby Hope, for Don Starnowski Jr. and Nash Shuey. We pray for Turkey and Syria, uh, for all affected by the earthquakes, for your healing and help to them. We pray for peace and in Ukraine. And we pray for people affected by severe weather, winds, and snow. We thank you this day for so many blessings for all the people who help our community, for volunteers and first responders, for businesses, for teachers and school staff, all those people who make it a good place to live. And we lift up to you now in silence our prayer requests as well as our thanks for all that you bless us with. In all this we pray in confidence, O oh God, that you hear and answer prayer. Amen. And now please be seated. As God has blessed us, we'll return a blessing with our offering. And I wanted to mention we got a thank you from the Hope Center for the Christmas gifts for the kids there. And they said they'd like to send our sincere thanks for your generous support. And because of your deep caring, many spirits were made bright. And your thoughtfulness to make a difference in the life of survivors and their families not only improves their quality of life, but enriches our community. And we simply can't thank you enough. So thank you for your giving. And now we will receive our offering.
forgiveness, your compassion, and your love. And we offer these gifts from our hearts. We offer our financial gifts as well as our lives in service to you. And we pray that all we are and do might overflow in goodness to the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to thank all who served today. I want to thank Cheryl and Melody for the beautiful music and our greeter, Bonnie Rako, our acolytes, Kate Billiard and Kevin Williard, our scripture reader, Brenda Mace, our ushers, Dave Kiesling and Lori Bond, the video by Mary Hart, and Sunday school teachers, Lori Bond and Jess Welker, and the bulletin by Ashley Merchant. Please join in the sacrament of communion insert. God be with you. And also, also with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to God. Let us give thanks to God most high. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the gift of Jesus, our Savior. In obedience to you, he suffered on the cross, was raised from the dead, and delivered us from sin and death. With your people of faith in all times, we praise you with joy. Holy and God, we come, come to your, your table to be fed the true bread of eternal, eternal life. And with all, all the saints on heaven and earth, we glorify you. of me. And likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup, and after giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink of it, in remembrance of me. And now let us pray the prayer our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. The ushers may come forward.
Take care, Chris. Please stand and join in the prayer of thanksgiving. Bountiful God, we give you thanks that you have refreshed us at your table by granting us the presence of Christ. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and send us forth into the world of courage and peace, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds. Go forth in God's love. Amen.